Hey, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, please don't hesitate to click that subscribe button down below. And without further ado, let's get into my historical romance book haul part two. So I found part one, God, I think it was like a month ago or something, but <laughs> at that time I already had like a lot more that I needed to film and I have still accumulated more. I have since slowed down a little bit in the last couple of weeks. Um, I've kind of decided to be a bit more picky about <laughs> which ones I'm getting and not just being like, oh, it's pretty, let's buy it. So because of that, I don't actually know what I would say 80% of these are about. So I'm just gonna really go off of what the back cover or like a little mini synopsis says, and that'll be my explanation of these books to you because I haven't read any of them. If there are any of these that you absolutely adore, please let me know in the comments which ones I should be picking up first. It's kind of funny. So the first author is actually inspired by Avery at Avery Loves Books because I love her. Um, she's really sweet. She's a great like romance booktuber in general, and she does read quite a few historicals and this is an author that she recently read. She didn't love the books, but I, like her, thought, wow, these are really pretty. So that author is Kathy Maxwell. So here we have When Dreams Come True, and this is what the step back looks like. It says, the English Lord had everything except a bride, but was the beautiful maiden who emerged from the sea the answer to his dreams? Okay, so she's not lost memory, like she still has her memory, but she has a secret past, so I'm very excited. We have a seduction at Christmas. I'm not the biggest fan of Christmas stories, but it was in the lot. And it does have quite a sexy, pretty step back, so I'm chill with it. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show like all the step backs for each of the lots, and then I'll go into the synopsis, so I'm not like having to zoom in and out, such a pain. So this one's, oh, this is the first in her Scandalous and Seduction series. So we have the Duke of Holborn and Fiona Lachlan. The Duke of Holborn, people have been trying to get him to marry for years and there are also killers trying to kill him. And what happens is Fiona is kind of paid to lure him into danger, but then something goes terribly wrong and now she ends up posing as his ward, so. That seems interesting. Then we have the marriage contract. This is the one that I really wanted from the lot and that is the inside of the step back. It's double, which is always my fave. So I'm trying to decide if I want to get the other ones in this series because on Goodreads, some of the people who I trust historical romance wise don't love the entire series. But this one says, she agreed to marry him sight unseen and traveled to Scotland to meet her husband. Can he ever fall in love with a wife he didn't choose? So we follow an Earl exiled from society and then a girl who is in a marriage contract with him and ends up having to go and be like, dude, we're married. Like, hello. And then we also have the wedding wager, which has this. Oh my God, I'm so obsessed. I, oh my God, when I saw this, I was like, I need it now. So we follow Mary Gates and her family used to have really famous stables, but they've since like kind of fallen out of prestige. So she needs a new horse and she ends up betting and winning this stud, but she doesn't actually have the money to pay for it. And so she ends up going to London to find a husband, but then her neighbor and rival ends up following her there. And I'm guessing they fall in love. Oh, okay. So those are the Kathy Maxwell books. Then we have a crap ton of <laughs> Joanna Lindsay. Um, I really wanted to get a lot of her old covers. So that's what I did. So most of these are just like cover buys rather than step backs, except for one of them. We have Fires of Winter, Defy Not the Heart, Savage Thunder, which came in great condition, Silver Angel, which also came in really nice condition, and Tender Rebel, which I'm obsessed with this one. And then the Pursuit is the only one that I got that has a step back, and that's what it looks like. I just found out that Joanna Lindsay is dead. I had no idea. How sad is that? I'm like, oh gosh. Um, so I read one of her books last year. It was Hearts of Flame for a specific reading vlog where I read booktuber favorites. I'm actually gonna do another one of those. So let me know your favorite historical romance booktubers down below. But um, I loved Hearts of Flame. So this is also in the same vein of that. So this is another like Viking captive. Then The Pursuit. So following Melissa McGregor who escapes from her Scottish home to be part of the London social scene. And when she gets there, she ends up meeting Lincoln Ross Burnett. And they have a bit of an attraction. They end up meeting on her grandfather's lands and they know that they're like meant to be together, but there are very serious obstacles impending them. So, ooh, oh, it's because she has six brothers. Oh, 
She has six brothers that will not let her get married to this man. Oh, very fun. Everyone raves about Savage Thunder, or at least the cover of it. So follow Jocelyn Fleming, who is newly widowed, and she ends up fleeing from London society to the untamed American West. And then we have Colt Thunder, who is a rebel alona, and the two of them end up meeting in Arizona. I'm really into like the whole idea of kind of getting into more American, like Western books. So we'll see how that one goes. Oh, wow. Okay. This is one of those ones. She, some of her books have questionable situations. So Silver Angel follows Chantelle, who was kidnapped and sold into slavery, but she swore she would never surrender to her master until it ends up being this really attractive man. And that's all I can tell from the synopses. So, okay. Define Not the Heart is, oh, another kidnap. <laughs> so Raina is kidnapped by a knight. Oh, oh, who was pledged to deliver her to a marriage to Lord Rothwell. Oh, so he, kid so he kidnaps her to bring her to get married. I'm guessing she falls in love with him. Nice. And then Tender Rebel. Oh, okay, so we have another Scottish heiress and she needs to get married so that her cousin doesn't take her fortune. And that's where Anthony Mallory comes in and that's where their romance is gonna be. Very fun. Uh, then we have more um, <laughs> Suzanne Enoch. <laughs> I own so many of these now. I own so many of her books that I've not read one of them. It's my goal, I think, in May to read at least one of her books because this is getting a little out of hand. We have Stolen Kisses. This doesn't have anything special about it. Lady Rogue, also nothing special about it. Mad, Bad and Dangerous in Plaid, <laughs> which is hilarious. The Taming of a Gentle Rogue, which does have a step back, which I adore. I love when the legs are hiked up. A Beginner's Guide to Rakes, which has this step back in it. And Taming an Impossible Rogue, which has this step back, which is just like the color scheme and that is on point. So I know that the Taming of an Impossible Rogue and a Beginner's Guide to Rakes, these are both part of the same series, the Scandalous Bride series, which I'm very interested in. Um, also just the covers are really pretty and I'm just really into them. So in this one we follow the recently widowed Lady Diane and she ends up using her husband's fortune to open a gaming hall, a gentleman's gaming hall. Then the Marquise of Hayberry, Oliver Warren, is quite stunned by this. Many, many years ago they actually had like a little bit of like a romance and now he is a notorious gambler and he has come in to help her learn how to do this whole gaming hall thing and it's them Falling back in love. Oh, a second chance. Oh, okay. So this one takes place definitely afterwards because it mentions the gambling hall. So you follow Lady Camille, who one year ago left her fiance at the altar. Good on her. But now she's disowned with no husband or family to support her. Oh, okay. And so she goes to the club that is from the first book to work there. But because that's no proper place for her to be, her jilted fiance comes back to... <laughs> save her oh my gosh okay really fun as well so in the care and taming of a rogue we follow captain bennett wolf who everyone thought died when he was like on some ship at one point but now he's come back and he's like i'm alive and everyone's like oh you're the most marriageable man of the season but he only has eyes for lady philippa edison and she's like i want proper courting rituals like this is like i don't know what you've been doing i don't know what's going on but you will treat me like a lady and i'm going to be courted properly if you want anything from me and very, very excited. Stolen Kisses, I, I don't like this cover. It kind of has like a slight paranormal feel to it, if you feel what I mean. So we follow Jack Faraday, who is the Marquise of Danbury, and he is very rich, very titled, and a very, very well-known rake. But he meets his match in Miss Lilith Benton, who is known as the Ice Queen. And she just really wants a respectable marriage at the end, but he's very tempting. And what ends up happening is they accidentally get involved in a Duke's mysterious death. So they have to become conspirators to clear their name. Okay, yes. Then we have Lady Rogue, which is, oh, this has, starts off with like a Dear Reader by Suzanne Enoch. And it says, P.S. Lady Rogue also marks the debut of Mr. Francis Henning, who has made an appearance in every historical I've written since. Oh, that's really cool. So this is about an Earl who falls in love with a spy. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, yes. And then Mad, Bad and Dangerous and Plat. I'm so obsessed with that title. So I follow Rowena who has just come back from a very successful season in London to the Scottish Highlands. And she's very refined now. She's seen like all the glitz, the glamour, also just like how the gentlemen act. And she's really not interested in her childhood crush who is Lachlan McTeer. 
But Lachlan sees her come back and he's like, wow, there's three months away. Like she's really changed. Like he's very much into her now and he has to try and find a way to get her to like, like him again. And mm, okay. So those are the Suzanne Enoch books. Then we have two Judith McNaughts and that is Whitney, My Love and A Kingdom of Dreams. I know that there's a lot of controversy with Whitney, My Love, but I want to read it anyway. I will be reading the Kindle version. I do know that the Kindle version doesn't have like the iffy scene that is actually in the printed copy. So we follow Whitney who is quite boisterous, very loud. She's just like not your typical like proper woman. And she comes back from living in Paris society to England to find her childhood love, only to find out that her dad ended up selling her because he was bankrupt to this Duke. And she's like, I'm not getting married to this man. Like this isn't happening. And I'm guessing it's their romance. And this is Kingdom of Dreams, which has this step back on the inside. I, I like it and I dislike it because it's kind of way too close for my liking, but. So we follow Jennifer Merrick, who is a Scottish beauty who was abducted from her convent school by Royce Westmoreland, the Duke of Claymore, also known as the Wolf. Hmm. Okay. Then I have three Lisa Claypus books. These are the ones I'm most excited about. And I actually just received these the other day. I bought them all separately, but it's very hard to track down old Lisa Claypus covers. They go for like 50 bucks a pop and it's crazy, but I got these all for a really good price. So we just have Chasing Cassandra, which is the first one. This is in the Ravenel series, which I have read from before. And this is the step back for it. Then we have Someone to Watch Over Me, which was the one I was most excited about. And it came in really amazing condition. I don't think this has ever been read. And this is the step back for it. Then we have Prince of Dreams. I actually thought I was getting a different cover and I was so surprised when this one came in because this is very much like sought after and that is what this step back looks like for this one. And then we have Where Dreams Begin, which I'm so excited I found. I know that recently Jazz from Peace Love Books got her copy and this is what the step back looks like for this one. I got this on Facebook Marketplace for five dollars. It was someone who lives like here in New York because um, with Facebook Marketplace, they sell like depending on like your radius. So I was like, oh my God, yes. So I actually don't know what any of these are about. I know that this is like the sixth book in the Ravenel series possibly. So that's what that one is. I really enjoyed the one I read. It was actually one of my favorite books of last year. Um, so I'm definitely planning on continuing on with the Ravenel series. Okay, so we follow Vivian Rose Duval who wakes up being rescued from the Thames River with no memory. And now she's under the protection of the enigmatic and charming Grant Morgan. And I'm guessing someone maybe tried to get rid of her or kill her. Then Prince of Dreams. Oh, he's a prince. Okay, that makes so much sense as to why it's called Prince of Dreams. I'm very confused by the synopsis of this. So I'm not even gonna try and explain what this one's about because someone's, it says bit of exile. And then it says there's this woman that he really wants to be with. And then it says passion's magic carries them back to the bygone era of splendor and romantic dreams. It's like, I'm what is there? I'm so confused. I actually have no idea. So we follow Zachary Brunson who has built an empire for himself. He's very renowned, but he needs a wife to secure his position in society. And he ends up coming across Lady Holly Taylor. And I'm guessing it's their romance. So I'm very excited. Then the next author I have is Beverly Jenkins. We have Jewel, Captured, and Topaz. This is actually the first edition I recently learned from one of my friends over on Instagram. Her name is Elizabeth, how like Beverly Jenkins old covers works. And if they're an old cover and it also has the raised text, it means that it is a first edition, which is really exciting. But I read book one in her Destiny series two months ago, I think, and fell in love with it. And so I was like, I need to read all of Beverly Jenkins books. And that's where all these came from. Oh, this is the first, so this follows one of the Lebec brothers. I, I feel like I follow a lot of people who read Beverly Jenkins. And so I have heard of each of these synopses before, but I forget them before I get to the book. So we follow Dominique Lebec, who is the most notorious privateer. And then he ends up coming across Claire Sullivan, who is a stunning slave on board of a ship that he comes to, you know, take and it's their romance. Ho, ho, ho. Then Jewel follows Eli Grayson, who is one of the most handsome, charming, and intelligent men in Grayson Grove. Oh, okay. So he ends up convincing his friend Jewel to pose as his wife for one night, but then they end up having to tie the knot to save his career and her reputation. Yes. This is a very, very, very lengthy description. I'm just gonna give you a very short idea of what this is about. So follow Kate Love. She's a young newspaper reporter and she's on the trail of a railroad stock swindler who has been preying on elderly blacks and she ends up getting pointed in the direction of Rupert Samuels 
who was one of the wealthiest and most eligible black men in the East. And her COVID affairs to get close enough to uncover the goods on him, bring her to becoming his wife instead. <laughs> So very exciting for this one. So that's by Beverly Jenkins. And then I have The Secret by Julie Garwood. Everyone raves about this book and seems to love it. And oh, that's where a lot of these books, like a lot of the random ones came from is because there was a historical lot that had this book in it. So I bought the, <laughs> I bought the entire lot just to get this book. Um, three of the books actually currently, I'm gonna show you next, but I was like, I need this one. And then I got these other ones in like, as a result. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So we follow Judith who travels from her lovely house in England back to the Highlands because her friend is giving birth. But that's only part of the reason she's actually going back so she can actually meet the dad she's never known, the Laird McLean. But she ends up getting escorted there by this Scottish barbarian who is the Laird of his own clan, Ian Maitland. So very exciting for this. I like these travel ones. It seems like a lot of the Scottish Highlander ones have to do with like escorting someone somewhere or capturing them. And it's like a travel romance for all these. So these are the ones that I end up getting in that lot with the secrets. So I'll show you them right now. So the first one is Three Weeks with Lady X by Eloisa James. I'm so excited. I've been really, really wanting to try Eloisa James because I follow her on TikTok and she's just like the loveliest lady I've ever met. Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Dare. I adore Tessa Dare. I haven't read this series, but this is what the step back looks like. And I'm like obsessed with this color scheme. The Prince Kidnaps a Bride by Christina Dodd. And this is what the step back looks like. <laughs> Come on, is that not beautiful? And then A Dangerous Man by Rosemary Rogers. And ah, also another beautiful one. So we follow Victoria Ryan who has tasted freedom while she's been living in Boston. She grew up in Alta California where there are very strict rules on how a lady has to act. And she has now come home for some reason or other, but she finds out that she's actually been married against her wishes. And so she's like, okay, this is not gonna happen. And she agrees to share her secret fortune with anyone who can help her escape. And that is Nick Kincaid, who is a cold as steel ex Texas Ranger. Oh my God, all these are like travel ones. I should do like a travel historical vlog thing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like coming up with ideas as I'm speaking to you. The prince kidnaps a bride. It says, once upon a time, three princesses were forced to flee their kingdom in the Pyrenees, vanishing without a trace until the day a prince can bring each princess home. So this is a series, I'm very intrigued by it. So we follow Princess Scorcha and Prince Reyna, and they were both destined to get married and rule their countries together. But then the revolution sent Scorcha to a remote Scottish convent and Reyna into a dungeon so deep a rumor claimed he was dead. And then danger threatened, so she must travel home with a simple fisherman as her companion. And it turns out it is Reyna in disguise. So very exciting. So we'll see how this goes. Any Duchess will do. This is, which series is this from? Oh my God, this is from the Spindle Cove series, which is like Spinster Cove, where it's like a cove where spinsters basically go and they just chill and enjoy each other. Um, so we follow Griffin York, who is the Duke of Halford, and he has no desire to marry ever. So his mum abducts him and brings him to Spindle Cove, which is like where all the spinsters are and insists that he selects a bride from the ladies in residence. And so we follow Pauline who doesn't have any dreams about ever marrying a Duke. You know, she's in Spinster Cove and she is currently a barmaid, but she one day wants to have enough money that she can open her own bookstore. And so when she is propositioned by this Duke, he goes, hey, I will pay you a small fortune if you do me this favor. And that favor is, hey, will you pretend to be interested in me and go through a week of Duchess training with my mum and fail miserably so she realizes that I'm not supposed to get married. And so she agrees to that. And I'm so excited. And then three weeks with Lady X. Oh my God, this synopsis, I read it and I was like, this book is meant for me. So we follow Thorn Daughtry, who has made a fortune and is now a powerful bastard son of a duke. And he needs a wife to kind of cement himself in society, but he isn't very civilized, he isn't really gentlemanly. And so he needs someone's help to kind of create that facade for him. And that is where Lady Zenobia India comes in. And she vows to make him marriageable in just three weeks. And I'm guessing they end up falling in love instead, so. Super bummed. And then here is the <laughs> final lot of books to get through. We have Guilty Pleasures by Laura Lee Gronk. And this is what the back looks like. In The Prince's Bed by Sabrina Jeffries, who is an author I hear a lot about. And that is what the inside looks like. like then we have The Lady Pirate by Lindsay Sands. The Last Helian by Loretta Chase. And Wabam. Dangerous by Amanda Quick. And, oh gosh, 
That's what the inside of this one looks like. And lastly, Just Wicked Enough by Lorraine Heath. And that's the back cover for this one. I was so pumped when I saw this one come up because this is not the current cover anymore and it's hard to actually get your hands on this one. But I was like, yes. And on the back it says, it is the rakes that attract her and the Duke of Ainswood is the most notorious of them all. So we follow Lydia Grenville and Via Mallory, who is the notorious Duke of Ainswood. I'm a little confused by the synopses as to like what's going on, but basically she was with this man who was, I don't know, not a good person. And so he comes in to like save her from him. And then she gets pissed because she hates rakes. But then she ends up kind of falling for his charms. And that's what it's about. He's very amused by her. Um, because she's very sultry and like a hellcat, according to the synopses, so. Oh, okay, this one, it says, the prim and shy Daphne Wade, the sweetest guilty pleasure of all, is secretly watching her employer, the Duke of Tremor, as he works the excavation site on his English estate. And he hired her to restore the priceless treasures he has been digging up. Oh my God, this one, I'm super stoked. So this is the first in a series following these three bastard sons to the Prince of Wales. The film is Catherine Maribel who needs a respectable match so she can get married and then inherit her fortune. She can't touch it until then. And she's hoping that it will be her childhood best friend who proposes to her because she's in love with him. But then that all goes to shit when the notorious rogue Alec Black comes in. And so he comes across her and he's very interested in her because he needs an heiress to help pay for his debts. And obviously she's an heiress who needs to get married. So I'm like, interesting. Lady Pirate, I'm, I've seen everyone rave about this. So we follow Valerie and she has been posing as her murdered brother on the high seas as a pirate. And she has just found out that she's been named the heir to Ainsley Castle, but she can't inherit it until she is married to a nobleman and pregnant. So she's like, crap. So she, her and her like motley crew of like pirates end up going back to England and they end up pretending that she's actually this very famous like noble woman and they all end up pretending to be like her footmen and like her servants and stuff and she enters London season trying to find a match and I've just heard that it's absolutely hilarious so I'm very excited. Then we have Dangerous by Amanda Quick. So we follow Prudence Merriweather who is 25 years old and it sounds like her hot-headed brother is about to enter and try and duel with the Earl of Angleston and she's like you can't do this like this is not like you will die like duels are a no-no zone for like historicals and so she ends up going to the Earl of Angleston's bedroom at like three in the morning to convince him to like stop this duel and then they end up kissing and making out and that's all I can tell. Oh gosh, and then lastly, we have Just Wicked Enough. So desperate for riches, the penniless Michael Tremaine, the Marquis of Falcon Ridge, is willing to auction away his only possession of value, his title, to the highest bidding American father. And that's where Kate Rose comes in because she requires a marriage for the one thing Michael is unable to give her, powerful and unending love. Ooh, yes. Okay, right. so those are all. <laughs> Those are all 36 books, my stars. Um, let me know which of these are your favorites, which ones I should pick up first. Obviously I know The Secret is the number one on a lot of people's lists. So that's definitely one I'm interested in. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below. If you wanna see more of me, please go to my channel. And until next time, thanks a bunch everyone. Bye.